9.1 radicals and rational exponents. It's standards MA912F1.2, MA912NSO1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. We're going to determine the nth roots of numbers in the Malloy radical expressions. We're going to use the rules of exponents to evaluate or simplify expressions with rational exponents. We're going to evaluate radical functions and find the domain of radical functions. Approximate square roots, graph square roots and cube root functions. So a is a real number and is going to be a positive integer. So if you see the nth root of a, the little n means it's called the index, and the value inside a radical is known as the radicand. So in example one, it says it's square root of 36. So you're looking for positive answers. So square root of 36 is a number six squared because it's a square root. So my answer is six. It says negative radical 36. The negative is on the outside. So it's gonna be a result in negative six. It says take the square root of negative four. If you plug this in the calculator, it's gonna give you an error message, syntax error. So square root of negative four, it's not a real number. That will be at a later time when we use imaginary values. It says cube root of eight. It's asking what number multiplied three times in a row can give you eight. Remember, the number two, if I multiply it three times in a row, results in eight. So the cube root of eight is a two. It says cube root of, cube root of negative eight, negative inside a radical. If it's a square root piece, which is an even index, it's not allowed. But when it's an odd index, it's saying it's the number repeated three times that's negative. Three negative twos multiplied together gives you negative eight. So the cube root of negative eight is negative two. On example two, it says state whether each number is a perfect square, a perfect cube, both or neither. So the number 81, the number 81 is the same thing as saying the number nine squared. So it's a perfect Square. It has to be a number repeated twice to be considered a perfect square. Number repeated three times, which 81 cannot be, to become a perfect cube. Negative 125. It's the same thing as a negative 5 to the power of 3, so it's only known as a perfect cube. The number 64. We can write it as 8 squared, which gives us 64, as well as 4 cubed was four cubed is 64. So it's a perfect square as well as a perfect cube. The number 32 is only the number 16 times two or the number four times eight or the number 32 times one. It is never twice of a number or three times of a number. So this is neither. inverse properties of the nth powers and nth roots. If you see the nth root of a all raised to the n power, basically the index and the power, they should match. If they match, they cancel themselves out and the inside comes out, your radical comes out. If the n happens to be an odd number, the index is odd and the power is odd, then the nth root and the n cancel out and just get the inside, which is a. But if the n happens to be an even number, Say it's a fourth root raised to a power of four on the inside. You have to throw it inside a absolute value of ours and then take out the absolute root of it. For example, three and four. It says they want us to take the square root of four raised to a power of two. Remember, square root means there's an imaginary little two here. The index and power, they match each other. So I just get four coming out. On the next one, it says the Q root of 27 raised to the power of three, the index and power match. So you just get 27 coming out. On C, it says the four through 16 to the power of the index and power match. So you get 16 coming out. On D, it says the fifth root of negative 243 to the raise to the five. Index and power match, so we get negative 243. So rational exponents, if we see A to the one over N, it's the same thing as writing it as nth root of A. If we see a to the m over n, it can be written two different ways. It could be a to the one over n with a power of m on the outside. All I did was factor out the numerator and it becomes the nth root of a in parentheses raised to the power of m. You could also take it as a to the m over n 
the power, numerator power stays on the inside, so it's a to the m, all raised to the one over n power, and we end up with nth root of a to the m as well. Same results, just two different ways. So example five says a to the four thirds power. So I'm gonna write it as a to the one third, I did the index and I moved my power to the outside, the numerator of power of four. So now I see the cube root of eight raised to the fourth power. Remember, the cube root of eight is the number two raised to the fourth power. So now two to the fourth power is 16, but it's the number two multiplied four times in a row. On B, it says four to the second power raised to the three halves power. First do the math on the inside. So it becomes 16 raised to the three halves power. So then remember the bottom number is your index. So I'm seeing the square root of 16 raised to a power of three. Square root of 16 is a four, which I then would raise to a power of three, four times itself three times, that is 64. On C it says 25 to the negative three has power. You're not allowed to have negative exponents. So first make it a fraction, drop it as one over 25 to the three has power. So now I write it as one over, remember the denominator is a two of the power, so it's a square root of 25 raised to the power of three. We apply our math, square root of 25 is a five raised to the power of three. Five times itself three times is 125, so we end up with one over 125. On D it says 64 over 125 raised to the two thirds power. So we write this as two separate pieces, I see the cube root of 64 to a power of two, cube root of 125, that's also to a power of two. So cube root of 64, that's the number four raised to a power of two, cube root of 125, that is five to a power of two. Four squared is 16, so I have a 16 for the numerator, five squared is 25, 25 is the denominator. On E, it says negative 16 in parentheses raised to the one half power. Rewrite it. This is the square root, because that's the index of the two, of negative 16. Remember, if you plug this into the calculator, you're gonna get not a real number. Example six says, use rational exponents to rewrite and simplify. So it says x to the fourth root of x cubed. x times the fourth root of x cubed. So first thing we do, we write it as x to the power of one times x to the three fourths. I rewrote it from radical to rational form. Now, since the bases are the same, I see x to the one plus a three fourths. Because the bases are the same, you can add your exponents. Now our exponents, in order for add, us to add fractions, the denominators need to be the same. So I'm making this a one over one, and I need to have common denominators, which four would be my common denominator, which means I multiply top and bottom by four on the first one. So I see x, the four over four plus three over four. Since the denominator bases are the same, I add my numerator, so seven over four, x to the seven over four. On B, it says cube root of x squared over the square root of x cubed. So rewrite it in rational form, so we become x to the two thirds over x to the three halves. Remember, imaginary two is the index. Index is always your denominator. Bases are the same. So we can start, write it as x to the two thirds minus the three halves because it's top to minus the bottom. So it's always, if they're in fraction form, it's you're doing a subtraction of the exponents. Bases are not the same, but three and two are factors of six. So I'm multiplying the second one by three and the first one by two to top and bottom. So I become x to the four over six minus nine over six. So we see x to the negative five over six and you're not allowed to have negative exponents. So it needs to drop below one. So I see one over x to the five, six. On C, it says cube root of x squared y. Remember that this is anything inside the radical is one piece. So I see x squared y raised to the one third power. You need to apply the power rule. 
each. So we see x to the two thirds times y to the one third. Cannot do anything else after this since denominator bases are not the same. So they stay as is. It says square root of the cube root of x. So first thing, rewrite it as, so the square root, and now I see x to the one third in the piece. So then we need to apply the index. So now I see x to the one third to the one half power because this is an imaginary two. Then we apply our rules of exponents. When you have a power rule, your exponents multiply. So we see x to the one six. On E it says parentheses two x minus one to the four thirds power and the denominator we see the radical two x minus one Numerator is already in rational form. The denominator needs to be changed. So we slide the numerator over, 2x minus 1 to the 4 thirds. The denominator, remember the index is a 3, becomes parentheses 2x minus 1 to the 1 third. Since our bases are now the same, we apply our rules of subtraction. So we see 2x to the minus 1, 4 thirds minus 1 third, because that is our exponents. 4 minus 1 is a 3. So I see 2x minus 1 to the 3 over 3. Well, 3 over 3 reduces to 1. So we just get 2x minus 1.